Merci. Je suis très heureuse d'être ici. Et merci pour euh, laisser me euh, continuer en anglais. C'est meilleur pour tout le monde, je pense. Um, well, uh, oh, pardon. Uh, today I will uh, show you how uh, partnerships um, can contribute to uh, can contribute positively to your marketing and communications performance. And uh, Corinne told me that I only have 20 minutes, so um, let's uh, take a quick look at uh, how um, cultural institutions um, use uh, partnerships up to now at the present situation and uh, at their perspective. And uh, I know from my experience that we tended to use um, uh, partnerships mainly for financial support or um, as door opener to uh, establish new contacts and networks. And I was always wondering, aren't there any more opportunities? And we will figure that out later. So um, I would uh, like to take a quick look at the perspective of, um, of, of sponsors. Uh, why, uh, why do they um, engage in cultural partnerships? And um, I think uh, apart from altruistic reasons, um, they mainly do it, of course, for uh, establishing customer relationships. Um, when um, sp sponsor sponsorship of an exhibition um, provides a good uh, means of, uh, of accessing new audiences, well, such as new customers or uh, government entities or even uh, media co uh, business contacts, uh, decision makers in business, and um, uh, cultural events in uh, such uh, exclusive atmospheres as museums or operas can offer uh, uh, corporate partners, um, uh, offers them uh, the opportunity to relate directly with their customers in a very, very um, extraordinary experience. So, um, and of course, um, corporate sponsors uh, use partnerships for uh, publicity reasons and in terms of a positive um, image transfer because uh, they and their brands can profit clearly with the help of the um, partnership of a cultural institution. So, um, um, why not change the perspective and just use partnerships in the, exactly the same way as uh, corporate partners do it? And I would like to show you um, how to increase your communication effect with partnerships uh, with the help of two examples. The first one refers to uh, my former job at Museum Kunstpalast in Dusseldorf. And uh, our museum um, was a so-called public-private partnership. This is why um, partnerships were uh, kind of a part of our DNA. And we established um, a three-level complex partner partnership structure at our museum. First, on the first level, we had three founders. Um, the city of Dusseldorf, which was uh, the public partner, and uh, the energy company E.ON and the trading company Metro, uh, which represented the private partners. And uh, they had the long-term uh, contracts and uh, supported our museum in an institutional way. And apart from this first level of partners, we, uh, we were always on, this, uh, on a search and looking for um, individual sponsorships, uh, corporate sponsorships for uh, single projects, such as exhibitions or publications or educational projects. And we were quite active in fundraising and we were always looking for um, corporations uh, which supported our museum in a non-financial way. Uh, for example, uh, corporations in terms of media or tourism. This was uh, the second level of our partnerships. And the third level was uh, the museum society which supported um, uh, the Museum Kunstpalast uh, by financing uh, the publications or the acquisition of new artworks. Well, um, after having set up this scheme of partnerships, we, um, we, uh, we, we tried or we started to pursue new approaches and new ways of uh, looking uh, and extending the understanding of partnerships. And um, I, uh, f from my experience, I have uh, uh, summed up five learnings which I would like to, t to, uh, to show you. The first one 
is a benefit from the partners' media budgets. What we did is we asked our uh, uh, corporate partners to uh, place adverts for our exhibitions by themselves and in their own corporate design because most corporate partners uh, have extensive media budgets and uh, can profit from, from huge discounts. So uh, it, is, it is easy for them to place adverts and it won't, won't hurt them financially. And for us, it was a huge uh, medial success. So we did it several times with uh, E.ON or with Metro. Um, the second one was um, be part of the partners' projects. Um, because most uh, corporate partners uh, realize many, many projects apart from art projects. They are active in sports and education. And uh, in this case, we asked Metro, who is uh, the initiator of a huge marathon race, if we could uh, place our exhibitions um, in, the, in, the, in the context of the race. And uh, in the end, we got the chance to, for example, to uh, place our um, exhibition flyers and uh, branded uh, grape sugar in the runner's bags. We put up uh, billboards. Uh, on the race course and uh, everything for free. So um, I think it's a good uh, opportunity to reach new and underrepresented target groups. Um, the third one is a benefit from the partner's advertising space. Um, you can increase your communication pressure uh, immensely by using your partner's advertising space. And most of your partners maybe aren't even aware of the spaces they can offer you, and they will be happy to give you um, uh, spaces for common projects. So this is one example what we did uh, with one of the most popular um, uh, shopping center in Dusseldorf. We got that space, which normally isn't even a space. Uh, behind this, uh, there are offices, and people uh, had to sit in the darkness for about two months. <laughs> <laughs> um, we asked them to brand the elevators with our visuals. Um, furthermore, we asked at the multiple construction sites all over the city if we can, um, if we can embellish them with our visuals. And we even asked Thales if we can use their billboard panels uh, in Paris and in Brussels in return for promoting their new connection to Dusseldorf. And here is another example uh, we, uh, how we, we used uh, the buses in the city of Dusseldorf and branded them with our motives. So uh, maybe this... You had to pay for that? No, no, we, we didn't have to pay for that. And um, maybe this uh, seems like uh, very tiny and small uh, things, but if you sum them up, they um, really, really contributed to our communication uh, reach and to our communication pressure. So, um, and what I consider as a key to success in, in these examples was uh, the was was to well visualize um, your ideas. And when I went to the sponsors, I always took um, layouts with me and showed them exactly what a billboard or what a poster would like on their bus or on their facade, so they really could imagine it. Um, the fourth one is. Uh, benefit from the partner's infrastructure. I think you shouldn't underestimate uh, the potential which lies behind the infrastructure of your partners because um, especially um, uh, retail partners can offer you shop space or uh, even mirrors or maybe windows. And um, what's important here um, is to find a common angle, a common theme. Uh, and uh, a connection between your project and the partner's products, such as we did, for example, with this naked lady, which we placed in the underwear section of a, de of a huge department store. So um, we also got the chance to uh, place our uh, campaign uh, on the airport or on the central station. And uh, we, um, we put it in bakeries, in bookshops and in uh, cinemas. And here it was, uh, it was also important to find a common theme um, to get a good effect, such as, for example, the bookmarks for, um, for the uh, bookshops or uh, branded popcorn uh, bags for the cinemas. So I think it's very important to, to find uh, merchandising or an idea which fits your partner's business. So the last one is uh, be creative. 
uh, we made very good experiences with being uh, with presenting creative ideas to our partners, such as uh, this uh, lady sitting in uh, the tourist buses and driving around and around for weeks and weeks. Um, another idea was we asked our partner Metro to uh, brand a whole tram. And as uh, the, the headquarters of our partner was in the same city, it was quite easy for him. And uh, we even asked one of our partners to buy a car uh, for our museum business for us, which we branded and used to promote our exhibitions. So um, uh, I, I, during my time at Museum Kunstpalast, we managed to, um, to win over 100 partners and to realize many different and uh, special projects with them. And I have uh, summed up four do's. Uh, to do's uh, for me and for you. Uh, the first one is um, do research in advance before you ask a partner because um, you should uh, really know what he is able to give to you. You should be realistic about it. Uh, otherwise, your uh, proposal might be declined very easily. The second one is um, be specific about what you want and say clearly what you want. The more precisely you tell your partner what you want, the more eager he will be to give it to you. And how much we want? Well, um, I think it, is, uh, it should always be a kind of custom made. You, you should always look at your partner and at your desires and try to, to find a good uh, connection. This, this was our uh, key to success. Um, as I told you earlier, we, uh, we even let our design agency make specific layouts, which we took to our partners, and we showed them uh, precisely how our ideas could look like. Um, make it easy, make it as easy as possible and as inescapable as possible for the partners to say yes. When I returned uh, at, uh, to my office from a meeting, I always uh, wrote a short summary and sent it to the partner with a, a definition of uh, the timing and the next steps. So um, I think the biggest killer for, um, for requests in that kind uh, is a non-binding nature. So you should try to rule all the gaps and the last one, be, uh, be generous and give them benefits in return. And um, have in mind that every partner is different. And some partners um, are eager on publicity. Some are more interested in corporate social responsibility. So you should always discuss and define very individual benefits. OK, uh, let's take a short look at the second example um, from my uh, actual uh, job at the Deutsche Historisches Museum in Berlin and it's about how to use uh, the power of partner networks to gain publicity. Um, last week we opened a new exhibition on art from the Holocaust which shows 100 works from the um, Memorial Center in Jerusalem, Yad Vashem. Uh, these works are made by 50 artists uh, and uh, were made under the most horrible circumstances in camps, in ghettos, and while in hiding. And this is why the works are relatively small size and uh, mainly on paper. And uh, most of the artists are rather unknown to the public. So it is not a project with huge paintings and big names and huge formats. And um, this is the uh, poster for the exhibition and you see there are many logos on it and indeed uh, the exhibition was made possible by a huge range of partners. Uh, first there was Yad Vashem who lent all the works and made the cura curatorial concept. Then uh, Deutsche Historisches Museum was, uh, gave the setting for the exhibition and its reputation as a, a federal institution. The Deutsche Bank and Daimler were the sponsors and funded uh, the exhibition financially. And BILD, which is one of the most popular um, German dailies, was the media partner. And last but not least, we had uh, the Foundation for Arts and Culture, uh, which was uh, the initiator of the project and played a major role in this whole scheme. So. Um, the project gathered many powerful partners, and in fact, it has been quite successful up to now. We even got the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, to open the exhibition. 
and uh, we welcomed uh, many distinguished guests at the opening, such as we had 10 ambassadors, even from Saudi Arabia, uh, celebrities, uh, many high-level politicians, and all the chairmen from German uh, huge companies. Um, built as the media partner, helped us very much uh, concerning the publicity. This is a, a tiny uh, extract from, from the media coverage. And not even all the German uh, papers wrote about the exhibition, even uh, international papers such as the New York Times or Daily Mail reported. And Bill even uh, launched a, a title, a headline two days before uh, announcing the exhibition as uh, the most important exhibition of the year. So, um, well, um, I think every single partner is you see, uh, is, is very specialized and very strong in his business, but what made uh, the, the project so uh, successful was the mixture and uh, the connection of all the partners into one network. And uh, it was just like a puzzle. And um, I would like to show you uh, my four do's, uh, which were very successful. I think uh, in such a, um, in such a well, a uh, combination of partners, you should always try to find common angles. This is very important to, um, to ask yourself what might be interesting for a partner, and um, this means you need to do a lot of research before. And uh, the most um, um, important thing is to find the first partner, a first powerful partner who will help you to find all the others. In our case, it was the Foundation for Arts and Culture, who had uh, very, very good connections to all the others, to Daimler and to Deutsche Bank and to Bild. So the first partner is the most important one. The third one is share the publicity. I think you have to be realistic about um, your role. If you have so many strong partners in a project, you need or you have to share the publicity. You cannot have it for you yourself. But I think if you share, you will win in the end. And the last one is be patient. Um, many partners means many interests and many huge egos. And I remember um, never-ending rounds of discussions and emails just to get the invitation ready. Uh, but in the end, it was worth it. And um, I think um, the exhibition had a very good start and it will probably become very successful because of such a tense network of partners. So um, just to conclude, um, I think there are many more chances in partnerships apart from the financial support and cultural institutions should use them all or try to use them all. And uh, by analyzing your partners very thoroughly by uh, finding connecting themes and by being creative, you can increase your possibilities and your communication effect. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> very, very positive. And after um, uh, Sankatre explaining, it was really interesting to see how the Sankatre uh, and, and you really match uh, in terms of how you share your common goals. So, do you have any question in, in the audience? Um, on va en continuer en français. Um, je vais tra I will translate, but you can understand French. Yes, uh, yes. Oui. <laughs> Un peu. Est-ce que vous avez des questions pour, uh, pour Barbara? Sur le uh, I, would, I would start with one. I have one. Okay. <laughs> um, Barbara, you, you mentioned that you have over 100 partners at Kunstpalast. Um, do you have kind of one per category? Or did some, some of your partners do the same kind of activity? Because you, you mentioned like the tram, the tallies, the buses. Do they cohabitate well? Or do you have to please everybody? You know, do you have competition in between your partners? Um, no, I, I don't think we had competition. We were very transparent, um, and uh, when we went to our partners, we told them it, it was it was a benefit telling them partner uh, X Y is on board. It, it was it was rather a benefit having so many partners. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you introduce yourself and stand up, please? Um, yes, I'm uh, Rul Danel. I'm working for FARO, which is a Flemish organization, uh, an intermediate uh, organization for cultural heritage. And I was wondering whether you have uh, something like an ethical code, because if you go uh, with uh, the Saudis into, <laughs> into a collaboration, I think 
this can be uh, quite sensitive, no? Absolutely. Um, at Museum Kunstpalast in Düsseldorf, we were quite free. Uh, we were an art museum. And um, I had to learn it at my present job at the Deutsches Historisches Museum that historical themes uh, or historical museums are completely different from art museums. You really need to uh, discuss every cooperation and every partnership very, very uh, thoroughly beforehand. Uh, and uh, the Saudi Arabian ambassador was only guest uh, to our uh, opening. He was not a partner. But uh, yes, you are absolutely correct. You, you have to be very sensitive about uh, specific partnerships in a historical museum. In an art museum, you, are much more, you, you have much more freedom. Another question. I have one question, Barbara. Uh, Barbara, you work in uh, communication, you worked in marketing, now you work in sponsorship. How do you manage to make all the teams work together around the same project? So you, you find a sponsor, you build a partnership with a sponsor, and then how do you involve everybody in your museum to be behind you? Well, um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think it is, um, it is essential to involve all the uh, departments and all the parties. Um, and, uh, well, regular meetings are very important. You, you have to speak together. And I think you have to have a scheme in mind before um, uh, starting this partnership. You, you really need to tell the people uh, what their opportunities are. You have to make um, it, c it clear to everyone what the chances are um, and, and not to just consider a partnership for financial reasons, but also for communication reasons and for marketing reasons. So you have to sell your project in-house. Absolutely, yes. I think there is a similar cases in, in Paris, and one of them was at the Institut du Monde Arabe. I know, Adèle, you had a, we had a conversation, we had a meeting recently, two weeks or three weeks ago, and I would be um, in interesting to hear the, you know, how you're selling your projects uh, in-house uh, as well. En français, si vous voulez, uh, Adèle. Can you, can you stand oh. up and uh, introduce oh, no. the yourself? The only problem is that I was answering an email and I wasn't listening, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> okay, okay, so, so I repeat. Um, we had a very interesting meeting um, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Yes. And you told me how difficult it was to sell your project in-house. And it's really, you know, um, what we were just discussing with Barbara, that how difficult it is also to sell uh, when you find you have a good ideas, you find a partner, how do you sell it in-house? Oh, yes, sure. Uh, actually, I think we all have the same... Can you stand up? Can you yes. stand up, please? I think we all have the same problem in cultural institutions, is that we are very convinced of the interest of having partners, but or even the communication unit, which should be interested in such a partnership, are not so uh, into private... Um, interest. Sometimes, you know, uh, everybody knows here that there are considers uh, um, not the natural partners. And so I always try to make them participate from the first meeting with the cooperation to make them understand that um, they can contribute to the creation of the partnership. And so it's not something that in the end I'm going to tell them that they have to accept and there is no other solution. And uh, uh, for instance, I don't know if I have an example. For instance, now uh, we are working on an, uh, an exhibition on the Oriental Gardens. And so I've been trying to find sponsors which are going to communicate at the same time. And so we have, for instance, uh, this big um, um, shops that sell all the material for gardens. And um, I'm going to ask money, of course, but uh, I'm going to work with communication unique to make them understand that we don't we don't have money for communicating. Uh, we don't have a lot of money. And so we are going to organize campaign in the shops. We are going to communicate on the newsletters. We are going to communicate on websites. And it's the first time I'm, I'm working on this kind of partnerships. And so it's a, a work of education. And I hope with these first partnerships, we're going to step by step 
Edu educate your yes. and, and engage and educate your, your yes. teams. That's a, a key word. Thank you very much, Adele.